Hi everybody, this is Dino and uh, today what we're going to do is talk a little bit about um, cooking in smaller quantities when you're living by yourself, possibly in quarantine, possibly trying to use up leftover ingredients of, you know, bits and bobs that you have lying around. Um, and uh, right now I have this nonstick pot, I believe it's um, four quart, I could be mistaken. I already have some um, water in my hot water kettle um, and I'm going to boil that. Um, so that it comes to a boil so that when I add my ingredients, I don't have to wait for that to come up And you can probably hear in the background. It's gonna make some noise um, And this is already preheating a little bit. So I'm actually gonna just throw some oil in there. I Would say that's about three tablespoons give or take um, fair bit of oil. I um, It doesn't need quite so much, but I do like that flavor that it gives um, That one is uh, peanut oil. I like how it tastes um, and then on our vegetable side, we have some uh, potatoes, uh, some celery, some cauliflower. Uh, those are red lentils over there in the back. That is uh, carrot and uh, that's an onion. So this is about two medium-sized potatoes. Um, that's mm, like that much cauliflower. Um, that is two stalks of celery, that's about one small onion, and then that's one um, carrot, one carrot that I've chopped up into those pieces. Um, first thing like I usually do when I uh, add spices is I'm going to add some mustard seed, and I'm going to let that pop, um, boil to come up to heat, and I want you guys to see the noises and the, the looks of it when it does its thing. While you're watching that, I'm gonna pull out the um, the, the asafoetida, the hang from from um, uh, from my cabinet above the sink. And actually, while I'm here, I'll also get the turmeric powder because I like turmeric and damn near everything. So it's probably gonna end up in here as well. So uh, so that guy's going. And what I want you to pay attention to is that. I don't have excited screaming popping yet um, because it's it's been a couple of minutes and you've been watching the pan heat up all this time. Um, I had started it before I started recording the video and only now is the mustard seed starting to pop and crackle and, and do their thing. Um, I discussed this on the podcast, um, but this is because I keep my stove at medium heat um, so that I don't mess up my nonstick skill, uh, uh, nonstick pan. Uh, then next, I'm going to add a little bit of cumin seeds. First in there was mustard seeds, now some cumin seeds. These spices are both optional, I just like how they taste. And then a little bit of asafoetida. Everything smells good. And then I'm going to set the turmeric aside for now. Now the veggies start going in, like one after another. First are my aromatics. So there's um, the onion, the celery, the carrot. The reason I'm using celery is twofold. Um, one of them is because I have celery and I need to use some of it before it goes bad. Um, the other reason is that I have seen somebody discussing how they didn't really see a place for celery in Indian cooking. And I thought that's kind of silly because it's a vegetable, it adds its own flavor to the final dish. Um, I don't know why you couldn't add celery to your aromatics um, when you're cooking them, especially for a soup, um, you know, multiple cultures do it um, and it does add this nice background flavor to it so I don't see why um, it didn't have to be weird about it but anyway not big enough there uh, didn't necessarily have to prove to anyone that I can do it I just I do like the flavor of celery in Indian food um, in small amounts this is not this is not huge amounts of celery it's about like what you would put you know like in a stuffing or in a soup or something like that I'm also adding a hit of salt because these vegetables do have quite a bit of water and I want them to sort of give off some of their liquid so that um, while we're all cooking, we're not going to be, you know, drying out the pan, to be honest. Uh, also, I'm going to add a little bit of turmeric because I like turmeric. This is optional, of course, but um, if you don't add it, you're going to be missing out on those lovely flavors. Um, that comes from when you fry turmeric and oil like this. And 
And to be honest, I actually don't want the aromatics to disappear into the background like they would if this was like a traditional soup, so to speak. Um, so I'm actually going to add my red lentils right now. Um, and they're going to take a little bit longer than the potatoes, so I'm not adding the potatoes quite yet. I'm going to add them very shortly. Um, but I did add the red lentils because I want these uh, carrots, onions, and celery to behave like it's a vegetable and not like an aromatic where it just kind of disappears into the background. Um, I have added, I want to say, about a liter and a half of water right now, give or take. Um, this is just, again, this is all to do with how watery you like your final soup, how, you know, how much you want it to do what it's going to do. Um, so, but I love this color. I love how beautiful it looks right now. It's got this nice yellow appetizing color. Then, um, when the time comes for it, I'm going to add the potatoes and then the cauliflower. And most likely, I know myself, I'm probably going to want to finish this off with some coconut milk or some coconut cream to just give it that nice, like, finishing touch. Um, but this is going to take um, a little bit of time to come up to the boil. I'm actually cranking up my heat to high right now um, because, um, again, I discussed this on your heat control episode of, uh, of the podcast, uh, which you can find on altveg.blogspot.com. Um, it's, there's a large column of water sitting right here. So like if this was pasta, if I'm boiling a lot of potatoes, if I'm, you know, if I'm doing a lot of boiling at once, that large column of water is going to prevent, um, any heat shock from happening to the nonstick coating on the inside. And I know the instruction manual usually tells you do not, um, raise your pots above medium heat when you're cooking with them, um, especially if it's non-stick. Um, but because there's so much water in there, I mean, just need it to come up to the boil. I'm not gonna keep it at this uh, full rushing boil the full time. Um, so as soon as it comes to the boil, um, I'm actually gonna take a look at these guys. See, so like, you even see that some of the red lentils are starting to expand already, which is nice, that's what we want but I don't want the potatoes to mush and break apart. I don't mind if the lentils do, but I don't want the potatoes to become uh, a complete mess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this down to as low as my stove will go to a simmer, um, and then I'm gonna get the lid and put it on. And as we do in my videos, we're going to let this park um, probably for now, oh, I don't know, I wanna say about like 10 minutes or so, um, at which point I'll come back and add the potatoes in um, let them finish cooking and then I'll add the cauliflower in, let that finish cooking and then just like test it for seasoning and add coconut as I need to. So as you can see, even though I've put it on the lowest heat, this is a bit of a heavy duty pot so it keeps the heat fairly well. It is still bubbling fairly rapidly. I want to take this down to a simmer so it's going to take a minute to get there and um, if it keeps being obstinate like this and it keeps boiling too hard, I'm going to drop it to the lower burner um, back there so that it doesn't, you know, keep rushing like this as, as um, as it's doing now, come on guys, calm down. There we go, there we go. Now, now we have a bit of a simmer. So I'm just gonna let this park for about another 10 minutes. I'll set the timer and then we'll come back in 10 minutes, see where we are and um, let's wrap this up. Okay, so we're back um, at this point. Um, we are at the eight minute level, not the 10 minute level. Uh, hold on, let me see if I'm doing this right. Yes, no, maybe so. Sure, why not? Um, and rather than having the red lentils cooked all the way through, they're almost like, I'd say about like 70 to 80% done, um, which is about where I want them when I add the potatoes in, the celery, the carrots, the rest. They're, they're coming along. They're not done yet, but they're going to be once um, the potatoes are done. Uh, so in those guys go... This one, come on, there you go. Um, and then for this step, um, I'm just gonna crank up the heat one more time um, so that it can come to a boil and then I'll drop it back down to a simmer. Um, when I left it on the lowest heat, um, it didn't maintain enough heat for there to be any kind of cooking happening. So I did increase the heat to about like um, medium low, not quite down to a low heat. Um, so now we're bringing this back up to a boil 
uh, add a little bit more salt because um, the potatoes are going to need that to do their business. And uh, so this is going to come to a boil again. And uh, once it does, I'm going to drop it back down to the simmer, let that go for another 10 minutes at the simmer. And then we'll be back to add the cauliflower and the final, final finishing touches. Uh, okay, so to be honest, I actually kept it at the full boil because um, the potatoes were actually coming along quite nicely at that heat. Um, because I cut them in biggish pieces so they're not, you know, obliterating and falling apart. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to add the cauliflower. Um, this is going to go for about another, like, five to seven minutes. Cauliflower, that doesn't, it doesn't really take that long um, to cook. And if you leave it over high heat, it'll, it'll get done quickly. Um, and I must admit, this is a lot more soup than I thought I would end up with, um, because, uh, uh, we put such a variety of vegetables in here. And to be honest, this is also the perfect place to add any other bits and bobs you had. Um, I added cauliflower because that's what I had. Um, if you have, you know, some frozen vegetables that you have left over in your freezer, you don't know what to do with it, just throw it into this sucker. It'll be fine. Um, this is the perfect place also for like um, any dark leafy green vegetables that you have, kale, collards, you know, spinach, you know how we all feel about um, uh, eating those dark leafy greens. We should be eating them every day. Um, doctor says, uh, you know, get them into your diet every single day. Um, so trying to get that up to the boil now. Once we added the cauliflower, it's gonna drop down the heat a little bit. So I want it to come up to the to that rushing, rushing boil again. Um, because at, to be honest, at the last few minutes of this thing's cooking, um, everything just comes together. You, you don't need to simmer, you don't need to faff about. Um, if you can see inside here, the red lentils have completely disappeared. They've sort of shrunken into the stock, so to speak, um, and they've made it like really, really thick and rich. So like, if you see me pouring that stock, it's not like this thin liquidy stock like I had when I started. It's, it's actually got some, uh, some bulk to it, some, some heft to it. Um, and, and the beauty of that turmeric is that now cauliflower is taking on that beautiful, beautiful golden color. Um, the potatoes already took on that golden color. Um, to test to see if the potatoes were done to my liking, um, I took out like one of the larger pieces and I tried to pierce it with a fork. Um, and it, I was able to get through the potato, um, but it did have um, a fair bit of resistance. Um, also, the potato has turned from completely opaque to tre slightly translucent. Um, that is something that you are looking for. The other veggies, the carrots, the celery, the onions, the everything else, they have not um, stood out quite as strongly as I wish that they had. Um, next time if I do this, I'm going to saute them for a lot less time and just like add all the water and the veggies and everything else much more quickly. Um, because they really didn't need as much time as I gave them to cook. Um, they... They smell great. Everything in my apartment right now smells really good, but um, I feel like if they had a little bit more texture, I would be happy with that. Um, but but this is this is good. I, I like I like how this came out. Um, and then now to just sort of like bring it all together, I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut cream, um, just because that like just that bit of richness at the end. It just um, I don't know it does something for the soup. And the broth turns creamy and you know everything just comes right together uh, I think I'm gonna add all that coconut cream because I do think it can take it so let me rinse out that bowl if you buy coconut cream in the store um, you want to get it out of that large carton as soon as you can um, and split it up into smaller packages um, I like to freeze mine in ice cube trays in the freezer, um, and then I pop out the, the, the frozen um, coconut tray ice cubes, and um, I just store them that way in Ziploc bags, and they, and they keep for quite a while. Um, and then if you want to keep like a small jar of it in your fridge to you know, add to cooking during the week, that's, that's also fine. But uh, you see how everything's coming together really nicely. Um, I'm probably going to give this just a few more minutes, and then it's going to be done, because to be honest, everything is pretty much where I'd like it. I don't want anything to be mushy or obliterated. I want there to still be texture um, and, uh, you know, integrity to the vegetables. So like you see, they are holding up fairly nicely. Um, and everything is cooked. Um, even this like piece of uh, cauliflower stock um, that, I, that I hooked on the bottom, 
again, you see how it's turned from from opaque to translucent. That's kind of what you're looking for. But there's that tiny little core of opaque in the center, which means that's where you're going to feel the most um, resistance from the veggie. So this is, I'm going to call this done. Um, but uh, if, if you prefer your veggies to be a little bit softer, take them a little bit longer, it'll be fine. Um, I'm just going to let this park for a while um, because I have to clean up the mess and put it all away. Yes, I did vacuum. Um, so by the time I have already turned off the heat, but it's still bubbling in the residual heat of the pot and of the, um, of the electric burner, but I'm just going to put the lid on this and let this hang out, um, until I'm done cleaning up after myself. want to get all the stains off the stove. Uh, you know, I want to make sure that I leave everything neat for myself so that, um, when it's time for me to put it all away for leftovers for tomorrow, I'm not faced with a big giant mess, um, staring at me. I still have some leftover boiling water in my hot water tea kettle, so I'll probably make myself a nice cup of tea um, while I'm cleaning up the, the rest of the dishes and putting them away. Uh, so if you guys try out the soup, please take pictures, send it to me. I love looking at it when um, you guys send me emails. Wow, that is getting hot. Uh, if you have any comments, please uh, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Um, if you do try it, please send me pictures. I would love to see them. Um, and I hope you, um, basically I just want you guys to understand that this is a, a weeknight, it's a Tuesday night right now. Um, I'm filming this just before I upload it to YouTube. And um, I managed to get dinner knocked out in, I wanna say about 30 minutes. Um, I'll probably serve this like with a pita bread or something on the side um, for, for dipping or you know just you know, as a side dish. Um, but it didn't take a lot of effort with regards to the chopping because when you're chopping one tiny little onion and like two stalks of celery, like one carrot, two small potatoes, um, and then you're just breaking up some cauliflower florets. We're not talking about a lot of heavy duty um, pre-prep. So I, I got this done in a fairly quick time. Um, the longest step, to be honest, was um, cleaning up the kitchen from earlier in the day to prepare it for you guys so that it looks nice um, when I'm filming. Um, the rest of this, this, this all came together fairly quickly. And to be honest, the lentils cooked a lot faster than I thought they would. Um, so I didn't even have to give it the full 10 minutes. Uh, the thing about this kind of soup in, in this quantity is that because you're making it in such a small quantity uh, versus like what my normal recipes are, which is like a full, you know, two, three gallon pot, um, things are gonna cook a lot faster than you expect them to. And, uh, and that's fine, that's okay, that's a good thing. That's kind of the charm of, of one of these midnight uh, sorry, midweek um, uh, dinners is that it's essentially one pot. Um, we're not talking about dirtying multiple dishes. The only reason I had multiple dishes dirty is because, you know, I, I, I had to put them in something so I can just dump it in the um, pot one-handed and I don't have to go back and forth. If you were doing this at home, as long as your cutting board is big enough, probably all your vegetables would fit just fine. Um, and to be honest, like I said, this time, I wish I had not cooked the aromatics quite so much. I feel like if I had literally added all the vegetables um, right after adding the dal, so like I would have cooked the dal first so that it can break up a little bit, then I would have just added all the vegetables together at the same time and um, they would have been fine. Um, and then the cauliflower at the last minute and then finish it off with the coconut cream like you do. Um, there we go, it's finally calming down. Um, but, but like it, it came together fairly quickly. Um, this is why I don't want you to be intimidated by cooking on a random weeknight is that if you're cooking alone or you're cooking for just two people or, you know, for a small family, this would most likely feed, um, two adults quite comfortably. This is, I would say like a good three, four quarts of soup right here. Um, two, two to three adults, I think this would go, especially if you have a side of bread or something like that to go with it and you're not exclusively eating the soup, um, it probably wouldn't hurt anything to throw a salad together really quick. Um, you know, this is, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. There's a million different things you can do with this. Um, if you ran out of bread and there's none at the store and you don't know how to bake any, um, this probably would be really good with some ramen noodles or some pasta um, as well. I mean, granted, you're gonna cook that in a separate pot, but like your, your base meal, did not take that much effort. You've got your protein, you've got your fat, you've got your veggies, you've got pretty much everything you could possibly ask for in there. Um, didn't take a lot of effort, didn't take a lot of time because my challenge to myself today was I 
don't want a ton of food to put away because I don't have a lot of space in my fridge. I have a small fridge. And I also don't want to dirty up my entire apartment by chopping like three pounds of each vegetable and taking such a long time. If I had done that full elaborate soup like I normally would and I filmed a video for it, um, it would have easily taken me like two or three hours. This one, this one, I just, you know, jumped in and started doing. Um, so if I'm able to make dinner and film a video at the same time, um, I think you guys should just give it a shot and, uh, and see how it works out for you. you know, vary up the vegetables, vary up the spices. Um, if you don't like turmeric but you have paprika, that works really well. Um, if you don't have the whole spices, what you can do is um, add the dal and the water together and then add like, you know, some pre-mixed seasoning of your choice and let it all come together and cook. Um, finish it off with the veggies, finish it off with the coconut. If you don't have coconut cream, um, you can use almond milk. It won't be quite as creamy, but it'll still taste good. It'll have this nice little component in there. Um, so there's a million ways where you can customize this. Probably this would not hurt if I threw some cubed tofu into there or some mushrooms um, or some tomatoes or, you know, some uh, fresh herbs at the end. I think this is eminently customizable. So uh, definitely leave me your comments below. Let me know what you think and I uh, hope to catch you next time. Bye.